today I'm going to show you how you can send out SMS messages after an unsuccessful call. For example, let's say you want to call your leads and some of your leads don't pick up the phone. You might want to send out some kind of SMS message so they will be aware that you called them before and you can also let them know the reason of the call. In this case, you have three options. The first one is you don't do anything at all. You just go to the next lead without informing them about any incoming call. The second is that you leave a message with a voicemail. And the third one is sending a message explaining the reason of your call. This is what we are going to build today. We are going to use Webby to initiate the call and we are going to use Twilio to send out the SMS messages. And to put everything together, we are going to use Anathan. So let's start with Google Sheet where I keep my leads. I only have one lead here and this is what we are going to call. But for this video, I only need one to demonstrate calling the lead and also sending the SMS message. So the first thing we need to do is create an N810 workflow. So I'm going to head over to N810 and create a new workflow. I'm going to call it send SMS. This workflow will be responsible for sending out the SMS messages. So what we are going to do is I'm going to create a webhook and we need to switch to post request. Let's switch to the production URL and we can copy this URL. And I assume you have an assistant in Webby. So what you need to do is go to the advanced tab, scroll down a little bit and find the server settings. And for the server URL field, I'm going to paste in the URL. Then we can click on publish. And what's important here is to include the end of call report to the server messages. Because what we are going to do is after the call, we are going to check the end of call report and we are going to check the status of the call. For example, the customer didn't pick it up if there was an error or if a voicemail has picked up the phone. And in these cases, we are going to send out the SMS. So if you go back to N810, I can uh, click save on this and Quickly, I'm going to create a workflow for initiating the call. So what I'm going to do is click on add first step and I'm going to select trigger manually. You will probably have a different setup, but for this video, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to select this one. And the next node will be Google Sheets node because I want to get the leads from my Google Sheet. And what I'm going to select is get rows in sheet. We need to log into our account. And after you authenticated your account, you need to select your sheet. Mine is in the leads sheet and I need to select the sheet one here. And if everything is right, if I click on execute step, it will return me the lead. And you can see that I have the phone number. And next I will need to add an HTTP node, which will initiate a call. I'm going to set this to post request and I will go to the Webby documentation to get the endpoint. Let's go to the API reference and what we need is post create call. I'm going to copy this. Let's paste it in the URL field. For authentication, you can select the generic credential type and then you need to select header out. We can create a new credential and for the name, you can add authorization. And for the value, we need to get our API keys. So I'm going to head over to Web API keys and let's copy the private key. And let's say better space and you can paste your API key here. Then we can click on save. And we can scroll down a little bit. Let's enable send body. And I'm going to switch this to using JSON. And for the values we need to send, I'm going to go back to the documentation and click on try it. And I'm just going to copy all the values that we need to pass to the endpoint. So let's open the optional properties. And I need to select the assistant ID. This will be the ID of the assistant I want to initiate a call with. So if you go back to the assistant page, you can find the assistant ID up here. So we can click on copy assistant ID and I'm going to paste the value here. We also need to provide the customer's phone number. So let's select customer and we will need to select the number here. 
and this will be the customer's phone number that we will call this value will come from the google sheet and i'm also going to pass some dynamic variables for example the name of the lead because ideally when you want to call your lead you want to call them by their name and after we can use this value to send out the sms messages as well so it will be fully customized for that lead so what we need to do here is i need to select the assistant overrides and we need to select variable values and we also need to add our twilio credentials so we need to select phone number and here you will have the option to provide your Twilio account SID and Twilio phone number, but we'll also need to provide our Twilio out token. So we can open up the more optional properties and let's select Twilio out token. And now we can copy these values. So we can select before the assistant until here. And let's go back to the HTTP node. And now we can use this JSON. So let's just paste it. And let's switch to expression first. Then we can drag in the values. So first I'm going to start with the phone number. And as you can see, I don't have any plus character at the beginning of the phone number. So I'm going to add it here. And don't forget to provide your Twilio credentials. And after we did that, we need to define the variable that we are going to send over to Vapi. In my case, I'm only going to send the first name. And I can just drag the value here. So now we can close this. And if I click on execute step, it will call the number. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to the send SMS and don't forget to activate the workflow before we call it. So now we can go back to the workflow and I'm going to click on execute workflow. And now it called the number. So we should receive an end of call report on this workflow. So now we need to wait a few minutes. And after one or two minutes, you will see that the workflow got triggered. So let's select the first one. And let's see what we have here. It looks like we have the status update. And this one is the end of call report. And this is what we need. So what we are going to do is let's switch to JSON and I'm going to copy all these values. Then we can go back to the editor and I'm going to pin this data. And next, let's add the switch node where we are going to check if this message is an end of call report. So I need to drag in the type here, which will be the end of call report. And if it's equal to end of call report, it's going to take this route. And you can add more routes so for example if you want to handle the status updates you will also need to add that rule here the next node will be an if node and this is where we will check the end reason of the call for example if the call was successful obviously we don't want to send out an sms message but if the customer didn't pick up the phone or a voicemail picked up the phone we want to do that so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to execute the previous nodes and I need to find the ended reason here. So you can find it under the body, message and ended reason. And if it's equal to customer did not answer. Let's add another condition and let's select or. I can copy this value here. Or if it was an unknown error. Let's add another condition. Let's copy this value again. And I'm going to paste in Twilio failed to connect call. And let's add one more. Which will be customer busy. In my experience, these four cases should cover most of the time when the call was unsuccessful. But you might need to tweak this a little bit. I think there's a documentation about the ended reasons somewhere. Let's find this. Cool ended reasons. And here you can read about various ended reasons. 
Ideally, you need to test it a little bit and find the most common reason of your unsuccessful calls. But this time I'm going to keep it like this. And I'm also going to override this value here. So instead of this ended reason, I'm going to select customer busy. And let's click on save. And I'm going to execute the workflow. You can see that it went to the true branch. So what we can do is if it goes to the true branch, I'm going to send out an SMS message. And for that, I need to select the Twilio node. And we can select send an SMS message here. You need to connect your Twilio account here. So let's click on create new credential. So let's add your credentials. And once you have that, we can click on save. And first let's add your Twilio phone number. And we need to get the phone number of the lead we try to call. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And we need to find the customer's number. And you can just drag here. And for the message, you can say, hey, let's switch to expression first. We should be able to find the dynamic variable, which was the first name. And here it is, you can find it under assistant overrides variable values and first name. So I'm just going to drag it here. And let's open this up. So it will say, hey John, I tried to call you about discussing your real estate preferences. And this is just an example, it really depends on your business what you're going to write here. And basically this is it. So if you close this and you can click on save. Now we have a functioning workflow which sends out SMS messages if the call was unsuccessful. And we can test it out by clicking on execute step. And if you see this, that will mean that it will send out the SMS message successfully. I hope this tutorial was helpful. This is quite simple, but I think it's very useful to send out the SMS messages after the call was unsuccessful. So you can follow up later or you can arrange a call via SMS. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you in the next video.